How's it going today guys? Today I'll be showing you my first coding tutorial for this channel and today I'll be demonstrating how to render dynamic components in a React app using something called session storage. So the example I have today is something very simple. So the user who was authenticated signs in and after they sign in they get a logout button and a settings button. So I'll show you how that works right now. So essentially we just click log in which I already pre-configured in my uh, previous work in this app. So I have a user who already exists in my MongoDB database. Okay. And put their password in. And you can do any, it doesn't have to be a MongoDB database. It could be any login system you've created, but you just have to essentially make sure that the user is there in some way with authentication. So I'm just making a request to my back end. So after I sign in, and I'm sure that's worked because that user is indeed in my MongoDB database. I can go back to my home page here and I can see that I have a logout button and a settings button because in my session storage that user information is stored which the React app then realizes and dynamically renders new components in this header. So I'll be showing you guys how to do that in the code but before we get to that I want to talk a little bit about First of all, what is session storage? So session storage, essentially what that is, that's a client-side storage system that allows you to store information uh, about the user or other forms of information that you can easily access in JavaScript. And it actually disappears when the session is closed. So when you close the tab, that information is wiped. And it's only a client-side, so it's not on your server. So it's only on the front end. And stores data with no expiration date. So it, it could be there until you close the tab. So it could be there for a very long time. If you don't close your tab for days, it could still sit there. But what's good is that the storage size is limited to about five megabytes, which is much more than typical cookies, which is probably on the, the order of kilobytes. So it allows you to store, although it's limited by five megabytes, that's much more than cookies. So it allows you to store some good information. The cons of this approach, uh, there are many cons, so you wanna be aware of those is that you can only store a plain text information. And this is not secure by design, so it doesn't automatically encrypt it for you. And it doesn't do all of that uh, fancy stuff to secure the user information. So if you have a password in the session storage, you really wanna be careful doing that. And it's not advised to store sensitive information for the user such as that in the session storage. Maybe if you wanna add encryption, that'd be a good idea. And it's limited to string data, so if I wanna if I have user data in the form of a JSON, I would have to stringify it and store it there. So that's another con that you have to do that sort of processing. It's vulnerabilities to XSS injections, so you can read into those, but that's certainly a big vulnerability of this approach. And of course, it allows the client to simply go into their dev tools and destroy the, the, uh, the token itself, which I don't see why they do that, but it gives them that, that uh, approach, which is another con. But nonetheless, it's a really quick and easy approach to dynamically render components in a React app, especially during development. And maybe even in your application, it would be fine to use this in production. So it's definitely a good way to uh, do that sort of thing, to dynamically render objects in the app. All right, so guys, let's dive right into it. So we have the sign button, as I showed you guys earlier, which uh, initializes or starts a function on the front end that communicates with the, the back end to authenticate the user. So if we go straight into the code that does this, we have this handle submit function that's ex executed after we click the sign in button. So currently we just retrieve as a response from the back end, we post the user information, we retrieve a response of a token. So this token, what we wanna do is we actually want to store this token in the session storage. So in order to do that, all we have to do is if token, just a simple if statement, and we can access the session storage very easily in JavaScript by just writing session storage. And then first we put the, the variable name in the storage, so we'll call it session token. And then for that variable, we want to assign it to the token value which right now is already a string. So now that we retrieved the token and stored it in the session storage, actually it should be dot set item. So sorry about that. So now we've set the token as user token in the session storage. 
We want to go to my header component, which currently right now just contains the login and sign up button, but we want to dynamically be able to switch that to log out and then also render a settings button once the user is authenticated with the token in the session storage. So we first want to set the user as the value that's currently in the session storage. So in order to do that, we just do session storage dot get item and then we have the name of the item which is user token so we set the user as that and if we do have a user we want to change this login button to log out so in order to do that we use something called a ternary operator so if we do have the user we want to show a logout button so if user is true we're going to render logouts And it'll be the same style as this button without the, the hyperlink. And then otherwise, we want to render login. So it's as simple as that. And then we want to do the same thing with a settings icon. So down here, we can put our settings icon so we can say user question mark. So if we do have a user, we want to show an icon button. And then in this icon button, we want to have a settings icon. You can just import these on your own through npm install. And then otherwise, if we don't have a user, we just want to show no settings. So we can actually have a null in the ternary operator. So just one more time, this ternary operator works. If we do have a user, true, it evaluates to the left component. Otherwise, it evaluates to the right component. So just keep that in mind whenever you use a ternary operator. And then I just have some styling in here, which I'm going to throw in real quick. Class name equals classes.settings icon. You don't have to worry about this. It's just for my personal uh, application. So I'm going to save it and you'll watch it compile. So once it compiles, I'm going to show you guys one more cool thing. So once we hit this logout button, we can actually simply clear the, the session storage with a simple piece of code. And I'll show you guys how to do that really quickly. So we want to say constant handle logout. And then and first we want to try. And we want to say a session storage dot clear. It's as simple as that. And then we just set user to null. Otherwise, we catch the error and we can just console log the error if there is one. So now on click here, we want to call this logout button. So pretty much once we hit this button, it clears the user from the application and it restores the login and sign up button. So back to the default so you can sign in again. So it's handle logout. And that should be all we need to have the, the dynamic rendering of the logout and settings button. So one more time to show you guys how that works to show you indeed that that is the case. We're going to log in. And so we have Shilla. And we have one, two, three, four, five is the password. You guys know my password now. And then I'm going to sign in. And as you can see, the token is here in the application, which works. And if we go to the home page here, you'll see that we have the logout and settings button. So just to show that one more time, the logout and settings button.